Hello Wagwan, this is your boy Ink and today we're going to use Kirchhoff's law to de determine the power developed in the circuit. Today we're going to use three equations. We're going to use P equals V times I which is a one of the power equation and we're going to use KVL and KCL. First let's identify the current throughout the circuit and then determine the current within that circuit. So we have the independent current source which is flowing this way we have I delta and a 4 amp current flowing this way. They all meet at this blue node, which we're going to call node A. And they leave node A in one. They're now combined. And that, that current is now called IG. So let's draw a small circuit for that representation. Take a closer look. We notice that there is only one current source in that branch and it's the 4 amps so I delta is now 4 amps. Let's do a KCL. We know that current going into a node um, is negative and current leaving that node is positive so now we have this equation. We know that I delta is 4 amps so let's do that. We want to solve for IG that is the unknown current. So all the current um, within the circuit is now known so let's now find the voltage um, within that circuit. So let's do a KVL for the left side and the right side of the circuit. So KVL1, let's name, let's name the circuit. The sides of the circuit, that's 1 and this is side 2. So KVL1 is going to, we're going to go clockwise for both. We're going to analyze it clockwise. So for KVL1 we have positive 60 volt and then the voltage across IG. Let's name Let's name the voltage across IGVG. Let's name the voltage across the 4 amp source, um, V4 amps. And let's the positive. So we have the 100 volts for the, uh, the independent source. Positive and minus. So now we have negative VG and we have a negative 80 volts and a negative V4 amps equals zero. Now let's do a KVL for the right side of that circuit. We'll name that two and we're going to do clockwise as well. So now we have a positive V4 amps. And we have a positive 80 volt plus the 100 volts across the independent source. We'll move the voltage across to the right. And now we have negative 180 volts. Now we have the V4 amps going back over here. If we plug that in, so let's just do that. So 60 volt minus VG minus 80 volt minus negative 180 volts equals zero. So now VG is equal to 160 volt. We have the voltage across each component. So now we can determine the power absorbed or developed by each of those components. One thing to keep in mind that the power developed in a circuit is equal to the power absorbed by the circuit. And we can use that and check our answer as well. And we're going to use the P equal plus or minus VI. So now let's determine the power developed by the 60 volt source. And that is equal to negative 60 volt times 12 amps. If you notice, the current um, <coughs> going through the 60 volt is IG, which is equal to 12 amps. So that is negative 720 watt. And that is developed. Let's do P, well, let's do PIG. Um, that is um, the current, the voltage across that current source. So IG equals, and we know that the voltage across that is a 160 volt and the IG itself is 12 amps. And that is going to equal to 1920 watts. 
and that is absorbed. So now the power across the, the power across or the power developed are absorbed by the 80 volt source. The voltage is 80 volts. And in that branch we have the four amps of current. So we go four amps. And that is equal to 320 watts. And that is absorbed. So now we stay inside that same branch and do the power absorber developed by the current source to 4 amps so 4 amps so let's do that so negative 180 volts times 4 amp is equal to negative 720 watt and that is developed because it's negative now the last one is the power developer absorbed by the 2 i delta which is the independent power source the independent current source and so we go and say p to i delta is equal to keep the negative sign times 100 volts and the current and 2 times 4 amps is 8 amps so thus is going to equal to 800 watt and that is developed so now we can sum up the power developed and that is going to be the power developed by the circuit but we can check it with the power absorbed and if both are equal to each other we know that the power developed in that circuit is correct so the power developed equals to we can leave the negative sign because the negative sign just shows us that it's developed so 720 watt plus 720 watt plus 800 watt is equal to 2240 watts and if we check that with the power absorbed we know that if it equals to 200 and 2240 we know that the power developed is correct so now we add the power absorbed which is the 320 watt and the 1920 watt and that will equal to same thing 2240 watt so thus we know p developed is equal to p absorbed so p developed is equal to 2240 watts